Okay, in my previous two lessons, I gave an overview of uh, the comma rule with regard to a list of uh, particulars of three or more using uh, linked together with and or or. Um, this is just a quick review, but our rule is uh, in a list of particulars of three or more linked with the conjunction and or or, put a comma after all the items except the last. Here's the example that we talked about before. Easy review. We're actually going to move on then to um, rule number two which is to put a comma after transitional phrases. In the example that I have here, um, during class today, people learned some things that they had not considered. I give that example, too, because when you do the transitional phrase, when you actually say it, what function does it serve? It serves to add details to the sentence. In this case, we, we put it in as during class today. It tells us when it took place. Uh, sometimes it shows uh, a transition between one idea to the next. Um, if we started with one idea and we wanted a similar idea, the transitional phrase uh, to link them together might be in addition or also or to add. Um, sometimes that same phrase adds details to show that there's a contrast between ideas. Um, so here we go. During class today, people learned some things they not considered. And when you read it, there is a natural pause at the end of the phrase, and that's why the comma rule applies. And, and as somebody who reads a lot, um, that transitional phrase and having that comma be at the end of it really cleans up the flow of a sentence. You do want to have somewhat of an interruption there when you're trying to comprehend what you're saying. Um, the same thing is true as when you're reading it. There ought to be a stop in the flow, and it makes it clearer what the reader or writer was trying to convey to the reader. I give another example. Um, for example, <laughs> we learned uh, some grammar rules. Now we take a look. The transitional phrase that we have there is for example, and then the comma falls after it. Now, one of the things that I would encourage you to do as part of this video tutorial is to go to the website that I've highlighted here. And I'm actually going to pull the website up. This website, uh, put together by the University of Richmond Writing Center, is one of uh, the web pages that I use as a teaching resource and I would really like for other people to use too, especially with regard to this rule. Um, as I go through, there, there's types of transitions like those for illustration. Thus, for example, uh, in other words, in particular, contrast, on the contrary, contrarily, notwithstanding. I'm a big fan of however or nevertheless. I like yet, in contrast. On the other hand, those are all very good contrasting um, transitional phrases. I've actually used these uh, conversely. The website also shows there's ones for addition. There are those that show a series of time, like first, second, next, uh, finally. There's space, concession, uh, comparison, uh, emphasis. And this website is a very good resource, and I actually use this to teach uh, transitional phrases. But the biggest deal when it comes to transitional phrases is that as a 21st century writer, we really need students and people to be able to convey their thoughts clearly and effectively. And sometimes the transitional phrase serves as the lube or the grease that keeps the flow from one idea and sentence to the next. And so by using that resource and the different kinds of transitional phrases that are out there, um, you can really convey your thoughts clearly and effectively. So that's the overview of the rule on putting a comma after a transitional phrase. Just remember, there's a natural pause after a transitional phrase, and that's why the comma needs to be there.